Lift your hand to the Lord and give him glory. Give him glory and honor. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of all honor. He's worthy of all adoration. He is God alone. The Almighty. The omnipotent one. The Lord in the midst of us. We praise his name. We worship his majesty. We adore him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Be exalted today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Father, we thank you. We know you are here. We can feel your presence. And we're sure you're here. Because you said in your word, where two or three are gathered together in my name, they are in the midst of them. And we know you will touch lives. You will bless people. You will change our lives. Nobody here under the sound of my voice, or wherever they are connecting across the globe, none will ever remain the same. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Let your word come with fire, Amen. with grace, Amen. with power, Amen. with authority, Amen. with simplicity. Amen. Let your word never return to your void. Amen. Lord, give effect to your word Confirm your word with signs and wonders. Thank you, Father. Jesus, mighty name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Give the Lord a big hand, please. God bless you. 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 Give them a hand, please. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glad to be in your midst today. After a long time. It, it looks like years. I've missed you, man. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Glad to be here. You may be seated. God's wonderful presence. Get ready today for a word encounter. Yeah. When God sends his word, according to Psalm 107 verse 20, he sends his word and he heals them and deliver them from their destructions. So, when God sends his word, the word heals. The word delivers. A centurion came to the Lord Jesus Christ. He wanted the Lord to come and heal his servant. And the Jews were persuading the Lord to go because the man was good to them. They had been building their, their synagogues. And the man said, no, no, no. I'm not even worthy for you to come to me. Just speak the word and my servant shall be healed. He knew the power of the word. Jesus didn't need to go. He only spoke. And the servant was healed instantly. That's the power of the word. There is nothing the word cannot do. He upholds all things by the word of his power. He made a whole world through the word of his mouth. The word of the Lord will come to you today. They put the destiny of Joseph on hold for 13 years. Every other person was making progress. It was like the guy stagnated. Not just stagnated, languishing in prison for an offense that he knew nothing about. He was framed up. And they shut the prison gates. He hurt his feet with fetters of iron until his word came. The day the word came, the word shattered 
the prison gate. The word took a hold of Joseph. The word removed his prison garment, put a royal garment on him, and the word positioned him where God had promised him many years earlier. That's a part of the word. The man became the prime minister of the most powerful nation on earth at that time without electioneering campaign, without a fly, without a poster, without WhatsApp, without social media, without Facebook. God jumped over all that. And the word picked him. And the word positioned him where he belonged in the power of God, in the plan of God, in the scheme of God. The word will transform you today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Glad to be with you. Um, between the 15th of February and now, I've had to visit 58 of our strategic churches. I visited all the dioceses, been to quite a number of states. That's when I, I had an interruption when they shifted the election date of the gubernatorial. So I had to skip four. Will have been 58. So this is the 53rd. That's why I, I'm not shouting, I'm taking it easy. It's not, it's not my shouting that will do the job. It's the word. And the word will locate you today. Amen. The word will move you higher. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And um, this evening by this evening by four, I would go for the last one. And I take my rest tomorrow and the anniversary kicks off on Tuesday. It's a, it's, it's a shift into greater glory. And you will be partakers of it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open your Bibles to Second Corinthians. I'm glad mommy is here with me. Praise God. As my precious wife of 40 years. It's 40 years this year that we got married for the glory of our God. And if I had to marry again, I'd pick the same woman. Let's go. Mommy, you're welcome. Praise God. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Let's begin. We all you say, let's participate. You say, open your heart. Someone say, my heart. Uh-huh. Open your Bible. Someone say, my Bible. my Bible. And open your notes. Someone say, my note. My note. Because when God is making a deposit in you, one day he will call for a return. He will give you an opportunity that out of what he has fed you with, you should feed other people. Because you are blessed to be a blessing. So let's go together. Uh, Apostle Paul was writing to the brethren in Corinth. And he said, but we all, that's including himself, we all, we all. Everybody speak loudly. Say, we all. all. He said, with open face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Wow. Beholding the glory of the Lord. Somebody say, Beholding the glory of the Lord. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Uh, what are you here to do today? Behold the glory of the Lord. You want to hear Bishop Francis Waluke? Without the glory of God, Bishop Waluke is nothing. But when you are focused on the glory of God, a transformation takes place. So focus on the glory. Let me tell you, friend. Say, focus on the glory. He didn't hear you. She didn't hear you. What's your focus today? What's your focus today? Talk to me. What's your focus today? Beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed. Uh, you, you guys are playing on me. 
as a oneness. This is my 48th year preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm old school. Typical. I see you King Jesus version there. I would, I will manage you. Uh -huh. Look at this. The only glory of the Lord are changed. Ch Someone say changed. changed. Loud. Changed. Loud. Changed. Loud. Changed. Louder. Changed. By the time you are living for your home today, you will have been changed. Amen. You will have been transformed Amen. to be a better person. Amen. That's what God wants. He wants to change us from glory to glory. From one level of glory to another level of glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Alright, let me get into it. God has called us to become partakers of his glory. That's what he called us for. To be partakers of his glory. You will see this in the scripture. Please, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1 and uh, let me read from verse 2. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. I will come back to that phrase. Jesus our Lord. Okay? Go to verse 3 please. Verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. That's this loaded. All things. All things. All things. All things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. He has called, don't forget this. Let me plant the seed of the word of God in you. It's the most powerful seed in the whole universe. When it is planted on the right soil, it blossoms and produces transformation. When you gave your life to Christ and accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you, are, you answered God's call to become a partaker of his glory. He calls us to glory and virtue. Glory and virtue. New Living Translation put it this way. He's called us to glory and excellence because the two travel together. Glory. There is no glory without excellence. Okay? And excellence is a pointer to glory. Excellence does not uh, summarize everything about glory. Okay? Excellence is a pointer to glory. But when glory is there, excellence is a sign con It's there automatic. So, you see, God has called us to become partakers of his glory. I'm going to, I, I told you, I'm going to lay a foundation on the, of, of the scripture and then we begin to apply it. Apply it. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. Look at this. That ye will walk worthy of God who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. You're called into his kingdom. You're called to become a partaker of his glory. I am called. We are called. Jesus Christ actually came to immerse us into the glory of God. To introduce us into the glory of God. The Bible makes it very clear that Christ in you is the hope of glory. When Christ comes into you, glory comes into you. He has called us to glory and to virtue. He has called us into his kingdom and his glory. He's called us to be partakers of his eternal glory. I give you more scripture. I, I can go on and on. I give you more scripture, all right? Now, go to First Peter chapter 5. And I'm going to read verse 10. Don't forget, God has called me to be a partaker 
of his glory. Please repeat after me. Say, the Lord, God Almighty, has called me to be a partaker of his glory. I'm called to glory and virtue. Repeat, say, I'm called to glory and virtue. What are you called into? Again? To gl- again? Let me read one more verse of the scripture and then we begin to apply this scripture. Okay? First Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. But the God of all grace, grace, someone say grace. Grace. Uh-huh. Because grace and glory, they are twin sisters. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be told for them that walk uprightly. That's Psalm 84 verse 11. So grace and glory. They are two sisters. We will get there. But let me lay the foundation. But the God of all grace. Who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. I'm establishing something. The plan of God for each of his children. Is that we will be partakers of his glory. That's amazing. That's unfathomable love. That he has called me to be a particle of his kingdom, a particle of his glory. And that when Christ comes into me and I receive Christ, I receive Christ as my Lord and Savior, glory comes in. Wow. The lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. Yeah. I have a goodly heritage. Say, I, I am called I to, glory to glory and virtue. What are you called to? Glory. Louder, what are you called to? Say confidently, what are you called to? Okay, now, what is glory, really? <laughs> and that's, that's another dimension. Let me first speak the negative. Okay? Glory is the opposite of shame. The opposite of reproach. If it's not beautiful, if it's not ugly, if it's ugly, if it gets pain, if it oppresses, if it afflicts, if it smells, if it's not like God, it shouldn't be part of you. In the first instance, he made us to be like him. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And he's a God of glory. He's a king of glory. He made us to be like him. When the crown of glory fell from our head because of Adam, he sent his son to restore the glory. Whatever it is that you have lost, whatever it is that is supposed to be part of the glory of God, in your life that you have lost today, recover it. Yeah. Receive it back. Yeah. I hear this. Anything that is contrary to glory by the anointing of the Holy Spirit will knock it out. Yeah. From today, you will be far from shame. Yeah. Louder, amen. Yeah. Louder, amen. Yeah. You know, in Joel chapter 2. God repeats again and again and again, and my people shall not be ashamed. And my people shall not. Because shame is not part of God. Reproach is not part of God. I'm going to break it down. Okay? If it gives you pain, that's not God. If it makes you sick, that's not God. If it makes you dirty, that's not God. If it makes you poor, broke, that's not good. That's not, that's not glory. If it makes you weak, that's not glory. If it diminishes you, devalues you, depersonalizes you, that's not glory. Glory is perfection. Nothing lacking. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Glory and excellence travels together. 
So if he's not excellent, that's not God. That's what the devil peddles. And a lot of believers, I'm talking of you, I'm talking to you believers. Born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. I see accommodating things that they should not accommodate because they do not know fundamentally the call is to glory. The call is to virtue. The call is to excellence. The call is to perfection. The call is to beauty. The call is to holiness. The call is to power. The call is to strength. The call is to vibrancy. I'm close to 70 years. I run, I run a very hectic schedule. Travel down from, okay, from a trip. I do a kitty. Two of our strategy centers there. Akure. And then, we were, I should say, four of our strategy center. And then we returned to Ibadan yesterday. And I had to preach at one of our dioceses. Inaugurated down the dioceses. By the time I was getting to my house last night, it was around 11. And I had no eating anything in the day. So I need to get a munch. Munch something. Because I know early this morning I will hit the road coming to House of Wonders. And I'm well, okay, you are coming. And listen, I'm as sound as stone. Hallelujah. From head to toe. Inside out. Sound. Because I'm called to glory and to virtue. Please, let it come out of you. You see, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. There's power in your word. Yes. Even psychologists, they proved it. Your psyche responds to the words you speak. The, your entire system. You see, if you keep speaking negative words, your life will be toxic. And you will spread toxin all around. Okay, but you, you, you're full of life, bubbling. Not only will you respond to it, you spread the radiance of God's goodness all around. Please, somebody declare, say, I am, I am called, called to, glory to glory and to virtue. And to virtue. What are you called to? Glory what are you called to? Glory and, glory and excellence. N N NLT, excellence, excellence, your health, excellence, your finances, excellence, your marriage, excellence. The desire of your heart met by God. No room for shame. Uh, get me that scripture. You find it in the Joy chapter 2 where it says, and my people shall not be ashamed. Twice, twice. I think it's around verse 25. I didn't know I was going to. 26. Thank you, mommy. That you see. That you see. Nobody can do me like she does. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Look, look at Old Testament glimpse into glory. And ye shall eat in plenty. Somebody say glory. <laughs> And be satisfied. Someone say glory. glory. Frustration is not part of glory, man. Unfulfilled desire is not part of glory. Near success syndrome is not part of glory. Chasing mirage is not part of glory. You shall be eat. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God. You, you, you are driving your brand new, fully padded, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which one do you name? New wagon. Somebody is naming Royce Roy. Somebody is there. Oh, oh. And, 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 you're, and you're cruising along like here. Say, Lord, thank you for this good car. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Someone say glory. God just blessed you with a very lovely house, lovely apartment. 
You know? And you got in the place. The finishing is excellent. You see? I say, boy, I just like this. Oh, this is good. Somebody say glory. glory. You see, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord, your God that has dealt wondrously with you. Somebody say glory. glory. Wondrously. He's blessed you in such a way that you are beside yourself. What's happening to me? What's happening to me? Look at how God turned my captivity. Look at how God has wiped away my tears. Look at how God has given me laughter at last. This morning, you will laugh. Amen. And look at this. That has never wondered with you. And my people shall never. Wow. Somebody say glory. glory. Don't, don't forget. Glory is the opposite of shame. I'm, I'm doing some teaching this morning. And my people shall never. Be ashamed. Because you see, just as light and darkness cannot coexist, glory and shame cannot coexist. You can't you can be in glory and be in shame at the same time. Ah, lift your hands, say in the name of Jesus. I shall never be ashamed. Listen to this. With your mouth that shall be justified. With your mouth that shall be condemned. Even if negative things have been happening to you, reprogram your psyche yes. by speaking the word of God, speaking the word of light. What God says about you, say it. Say. Keep saying it until the, your negative psyche lines up with the word. Say, in the name of Jesus, I, I shall, shall never, never be, be ashamed. And if there be any element of shame in your life, by the blood of Jesus, I wipe it out. The sin that is making you to feel ashamed, through the blood of Jesus, you are forgiven. The lack, the poverty, the talk of cash crunch that is over in your life, you will eat in plenty. You will be satisfied. And you will praise the Lord. And you'll never be ashamed. Amen. Look at verse 27 again. You know, again and again and again and again. Verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of, of Israel. The king of glory is in our midst. You know when I was praying this morning, I was thanking him because he's here. Someone say he's here. He's here. Say it. 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 We're here to behold his glory. And the glory of God is seen in the face of Christ Jesus. When you look at Christ, the glory beams on you. I'm going, I'm, I'm, by the time I'm closing, I'll let you know how you can move higher. Because if you're born again, you're in glory already. You only don't know it. The, the, the problem of the church, the challenge of the church is not the devil. Devil, my foot. Calvary finished him over 2,000 years ago. Calvary finished him irredeemably, irreversibly, permanently, perpetually. The devil is not your problem. Jesus Christ, he became a partaker of flesh and blood that he might destroy him has the power of death. Jesus didn't conquer the devil. Jesus didn't defeat the devil. Jesus destroyed him on the cross. The day Christ died on the cross, death died. So those who believe in him can never die. Because the moment you enter into Christ, Christ enters into you, you enter into glory. And it is eternal. The glory of God is eternal. When it is time to leave this body, I just get out of this earthly tabernacle. We have been enjoying earthly glory. And I check into unlimited glory of heaven. If, the, if you read the obituary one day and say, Bishop Francis Waluku is dead, don't believe any bit of it. I will be much more alive at that time than I've ever been 
all my life because I'm a partaker of the glory, the eternal glory of God. Give the Lord a big hand if you want to. Yeah. I won't forget what I'm saying. The devil is not a problem. No. Hosea 4 6 identifies the problem. My people are my people, not unbelievers. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They don't know what they are called into. They are, they are trying to manage what, what should not come near them. My people know those who are around me. I said, look, don't manage a problem. Fix it. Yes. Solve it. Yes. Kick it out. Yes. I, I don't want to see a socket here. I'm sure most, many of us are, are familiar with it. And then it, and, and they use uh, the, uh, the tape thing and then they, they put the two prongs of wire. And put, I said, come on, take that thing out of you. You don't manage problems. You don't accommodate problems. Fix it. Put the right thing there. That's the philosophy that God has taught me from the world. I'm called to glory and to virtue. If you look at me from head to toe, you see glory. If you see my suit, you see glory. Man. <laughs> Boy, if you see my shoe, you see glory. You know, I, I you know, have all my shoes in the house. The one that looks up, the one that looks up. <laughs> well, I pick the one that is most comfortable for me. At my age, it's not fancy first. It's comfort first. Praise God. But when people are ignorant that they are called to glory, they are ignorant of that. They will manage anything, any garbage the devil pushes on you. Some will even insult God and they said it is the will of God for them to be sick, to be broke, to be poor, for their marriage to be terrible. No. You are called to glory and to virtue. I, I, I chose not to preach this morning because you can preach people into glory. You're preaching and they have a flash of the revelation of Christ. And they receive Christ. And the moment they receive Christ, they enter into glory. But if you want people to move from glory to glory, you don't preach, you teach them. Because grace is multiplied through knowledge. You cannot live beyond the level of your understanding. Your understanding rules your life. What you don't know cannot work for you. Cannot work for you. I'll get there when I want to tell you how, how you move. How you move. Knowledge is so critical to it. No, it's okay. So when I sit in the morning, I don't just read the scripture. I eat it. I drink it. I suck it. I get myself loaded. So I can move from glory to glory. Each new revelation moves me higher. Another wave moves me higher. People can be preached into glory. And if it is, if all that they are hearing week after week is preaching, 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 30 years they still remain babies. They remain babies because the basic, the word of God is not being broken. They are not being fed. The greatest power on earth, militarily, come out when the tiniest element is split. They call it atomic split. And then they unleash such terrific, terrible amount of power. When you just read the word, you don't break it. Oh boy. Babies. So it's in a lot of churches. They clap. They read the Bible. All they're hearing day by day is preaching, 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 preaching that leaves them babies. They're not going home with a new revelation, a new understanding. One thing that you must go home with today, you are being called by God and called to glory and virtue. 
please say, I have been called, have been called by, God. by God. He has called me, has called me to, glory. to glory and virtue. And virtue. He, has he has called me to glory, to glory. and excellence. And excellence. If, it not glorious, if it is not glorious, it's not for me. It's not for me. If it's not excellence, it's not, excellence. It's not for me. It's not for me. Did you get something? Yes, sir. So if the devil is bringing anything near you, it's not glorious. It's not excellent. Throw it off. Satan, take your hands off. Take it off. That's what I do around the world. 1990, I had my crusade at the Eagle Square. Was it 90? Mommy? It was the first year of Obama's just presidency, 1999. And the last day was a Sunday like this. I'd gone to preach at the villa. I'd gone to pray for my friend William McCoy. I had five meetings. By the time it was evening time, I was tired. And the evening was the final rally. The place was jam-packed. Because we started on Wednesday. News of what was happening had been going on. Jam-packed. But I came tired. Exhausted. I learned a lesson that day. We have this treasure in earthen vessel. That the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. God taught me that I must take care of the treasure and I must take care of the vessel. If the vessel breaks down, the treasure will waste. That may sound like parable to you. But that was a lesson. I had to, ah, say, God help me. I'm tired. God help me. If, you, if there is any day you help anybody, today you help me. So I got on the platform. Thousands of people ministered, gave out a call, prayed for them. I, I was itching to get out and go to the hotel to rest. As I was descending, my crusade director said, Daddy, please, I know you're tired, but you've got to pray for somebody. I said, Ezekiel, get out. I've given all that I can give today. I've been blessing them since Wednesday. You know, get out. He said, Daddy, please. Daddy, please. They brought this woman from the general hospital. When I heard that, I said, where is she? The tummy was like this. Dying of cancer. She couldn't sit. She couldn't stand. Oh, that thing came on me. The hand of the Lord. I was so angry. I can't. The devil do this. All the tiredness went out. I bet. I say, Satan, in the name of Jesus, take off your hands. Take off your hands. Not only is it that he shouldn't lay his hands on me, no, I'll be anointed to destroy his works. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. It's not, it's not about me. No, that one is settled. He, the devil knows it. When I see people oppressed, afflicted, and the, and the unction of God comes on me, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost of power who went about doing good, eating all that were oppressed of so the devil, not oppressed of God. He does not. Oppression is not part of glory. It's a garbage of the devil. Jesus Christ goes to light, break those that are oppressed of the devil. Those that the devil is putting anything other than glory. Poverty, sin, shame, sinful habits, oppression, fear, depression. Those are the works of the devil. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he has anointed. As a Satan, take off your hands now. Take it off. The stranger shall hear my voice and obey me. The sinner shall hear my voice and fade out of their hiding places. As a woman, sit up. No begging. <laughs> you see, when the knowledge of God enters into you, you treat the devil like a toy. Yes. Knowledge is power. Woman, sit up. She struggles with that. One of several cases 
Look at the boy. Woman, stand up. Some people helped out. Woman walked. By this time, now that day, something happened, I forgot. NCA decided to come and cover the meeting that day. Because they knew my relationship with Ambassador Joe when I was president. So they came. Last day of the meeting. The whole of Igu Square were focused on this thing. The woman began to say, Woman, run! The place went into uproar. And Jesus received the glory. And my people shall never be ashamed. Lift up your hands. If it looks like shame, smells like shame, operate like shame, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I cast it out of your body. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Free from shame. From this day forward, through the mighty name of Jesus, you will be far from shame. You will be far from shame. You will be far from shame. Now confess with your mercy from this day forward. I will be far from shame. Let heaven hear your loud amen. amen. Glory is the exact opposite of shame. So if it is shameful, you are not according to it. If it is in your character or your behavior, a shameful relationship, a toxic relationship, an oppressive relationship, an abusive relationship, a filthy relationship is beneath you. You, are, you have been dignified by God. Oh, hear me. You have been dignified by God. God brought you into his class. Made you a particle of his glory. Don't go to the class of the devil. No, don't. Stay in your class and rise higher. So if it is shameful, it's not God. And my people, did you take note of the language? And my people shall never, never, wow, wow, wow. And forever, oh Lord, I what he said to the neighbor, please somebody declare, say, I, I shall, shall never, 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 never be, ashamed. be ashamed. Lift your hands to heaven. Every element of shame is terminated in your life. Shame, go. Reproach, go. Affliction, go. Loneliness, go. Depression, go. Fear, go. I uproot every atom of shame out of your life. Sorrow, go. Receive joy. 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 Receive your crown of glory. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Reinforce it again. Say from today. I shall be far from shame. I shall never. 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 Be ashamed. Give the Lord a shout of joy. Give me joy. Now that's dealing with it from the negative angle. Let me balance it up. Sit down, please. When we talk of glory, hey, 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 glory, wonderful, we talk of excellence. We talk of radiance. We talk of brilliance. We talk of beauty. We talk of strength. We talk of health. My friend, we talk of wealth. I know you guys in Lekki, you like that. That's why I want to join you in Lekki. <laughs> because wealth is good. Money is good. When the sons of, of Laban were grumbling about J Jacob, and they were complaining. You see it in Genesis 
chapter 31 and verse 1. They were complaining because through the wisdom of God, through divine revelation, through industriousness, through creativity, through productivity, through diligence, slothfulness is no part of glory. No. Foolishness is no part of glory. When the glory of God rests on you, the spirit of excellent wisdom to excel, to outsmart your enemy, to negotiate and get the longest mileage for your naira. To create wealth. To generate it. To make wealth happen. I'm talking about you. What God packaged you to. Part of glory is wealth. There's no glory without wealth. Poverty is not part of glory. Look at this. They were complaining. Let me read from verse 1. Genesis chapter 31. Okay. And he had the words of Laban's sons. Saying, Jacob had taken away all that was our father's. What were they talking about? What were they talking about? Wealth. wealth. Their wealth in those days were counted by animals. You know. And all that. The flocks. Had taken away all that belonged to our father. At least all that was our father. And of that which was our fathers, has he gotten all this glory? All the what? All the what? All the what? What were they talking about? What were they talking about? Of course, when we talk of glory, I'm, I'm going to come to that to let you know glory is in level. When I came in here today, I, I go around churches all over the world. It's part of my job. Small, big, large. As large as millions. I won't mention names of where I do that. As small as anything. When I came here today, I looked at the altar. I looked at the sound system. I looked at the camera. I know these cameras. I look at the drapes. I look at the ceiling. I look at the floor. Look at your faces. I saw glory. <laughs> Give the Lord a big hand. Huh? If you are not there yet, you will get there. You will get there. The spirit of glory will rest on you. And prepare you to glory. To glory. To wealth. To wealth. God will bring such dimensions of will to you that nobody will be able to explain you. Is somebody hearing me? They couldn't explain Isaac. They couldn't. Mm -hmm. They couldn't. In Genesis, you read the story, you are, you are, you are what church? In Genesis 26, there was famine in the land. Don't be afraid of famine. In famine, you will laugh. Famine is an age old phenomenon. And everybody, they began to jackpot. They began to jackpot. And the place they were jackpotting to, if there's anything like that, at that time, was Egypt. Egypt was the Egypt was the American Canada of those days. Everybody was running there. And Isaac too wanted to do what others were doing. Get the guy had packed <laughs> ready to Japa. And then God showed up. He said, Don't go down to Egypt. Egypt is not your source. I am your source. Prosperity is not uh, based on geography. Prosperity is attracted by my glory. If I'm with you, 
and you are in the wilderness, you will make the wilderness to blossom. What is critical is for me to be with you. Stay where I want you to be. Those that I want to, them to go to America, let them go. I'll bless them there. But if I don't send you there, and you go there. Oh, sorry. I go to Washington many times. And not far from the most powerful seat on earth, the White House, you see the homeless people. Poor, wretched, broke, wearing rags in Washington, D.C. The first year I saw them, I visited Washington first, 1994. And I, I asked my tour guide, I said, what are they doing here? He said, they are homeless. I said, homeless in America? I waited to me. They, you can't be homeless. I said, homeless? He said, yes. I said, and they're so close to the seat of power. Why can't the government put them off the street? He said, and, and the man said, pastor, he said, they, they've taken them off the street many times. That spirit is on them. No matter what they do for them, they will still come back there. I, I said, drive, move. <laughs> I don't want to come with people with the spirit of, you know, whatever it is. So, Isaac wanted to jump back. Genesis 26, verse 1. Go, 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 go. I see, go. Thank you. Bless you. Okay. It was a family. Is that the first family that was in the days of Abraham? And as he went to, uh, to Abimele, king of the Philistines, unto Gera. That's two. Please. And the Lord appeared to him. Oh boy. Ah. King of glory appears to you. You can never be the same. How come? Appear to him. He said, don't go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Follow my direction. Stay where I put you. And look at it. He said, verse 3. So join in this land. And I will be with you. That's the secret of glory. That's the secret of glory. I got to a church in America. One of my children cried to me. They threw out the property from the house. He bought the house, but he couldn't service it. And you know them. When you buy a house, you pay for the next 25 years, 30 years. And they threw the property out. I said, okay, 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 relax. I gave him a check to go and clear the mortgage. One. And I gave him what money couldn't buy. No. I laid my hands on him. And said, you know, you never owe mortgage again. Amen. You'll never be poor again. Amen. When the, then they saw the guy by the uh, beautiful gate in the temple. They said, silver and gold we don't have. But we have something that your money cannot get. In the name of Jesus, they gave him the word. Anointed word. They didn't give him money. He didn't understand it. He didn't know. Money answers to the anointing. Anointing does what money cannot do. I'm telling you, as a matter of fact. He said, get up. That's a walk. The guy was dragging. They pull him by the air. Say, we know what we're if you don't know it, we know it. Get up. The, the uncle bone received strength. What money couldn't do. So I said, go pay your bill. I don't live in America. Paying the mortgage or somebody who live in America. I live in Nigeria. Oh, but God has blessed me. And not only has God blessed me with money, he has given me something that is superior to money. I said, you must all be broke again. Go. I said, oh, he hasn't been broke ever since. The last time he took me to his house, I said, huh, this is glory. When next people see you, they will say, this is glory. They will see the glory of God. Whatever has been troubling you, 
contrary to glory, I cast it out. I cast it out. I cast it out. By the anointing, I cast it out. Receive glory. Glory. Beauty. Strength. Health. Liberty. Victory. In the name of Jesus. When we talk of glory, we talk of perfection. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. Nothing broken. Psalm 138 verse 8. The Lord shall perfect that which concerns me. Someone say glory. Glory. That's what God wants to do. Glory. That's what God wants for you. Glory. Perfection. Beauty. Excellence. Ah, poverty is no excellence. Sickness is no excellent. Frustration is no excellent. Depression is no excellent. They are the works of the devil. God didn't call you to depression. He didn't call you into fear. He didn't call you into brokenness. He didn't call you into poverty. He didn't call you into broken marriages, broken relationships. Your heart's broken. It, no, no. It's called you to glory and excellence. Excellence. He said, my God shall supply all your needs. Completeness. All. Not part of it. Psalm 84 verse 11. The Lord God is a son and a shade. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing. No good thing will he withhold from then I woke up rightly. When no good thing is withheld from you, that is glory. Lift your and say, I receive, I receive. Glory. glory from God. From God. In, the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Keep that hands up. I invoke the spirit of glory upon your life. Amen. <laughs> upon your body. Amen. Upon your finances. Amen. From ways you never know money will come to you. Amen. Beyond your expectation, money will come to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say that. I'm, I'm almost done. Pastor, I know uh, I must finish at a time. Uh, but I've not seen you for quite a while. But am I blessing somebody here? Yeah. Is your understanding changing? Yeah. What did God call you for? If anything contrary to that, what do you do? You reject it. The Bible says, resist the devil and all his works. And he will flee from you. Don't accommodate shame, sickness, affliction, oppression. No, 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 no. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Call that thing by name. You don't belong here. You belong with the devil. Get out. Back to the sender. I receive strength. I receive health. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. I told you something that attracts glory. I'll show you this. I, I was on the case of Isaac. He began to dig the well. The place was an arid desert. Are you following me? Yes, but everywhere Isaac dug, there was water. Water was up. And the people began, they, be, they became jealous, envious. Ah, we live here. We understand the geography of this place. We have been toiling. Water is not coming out. So when water, when Isaac dug and water was coming out, they would fight him. They want them, to, they would take it over. And he say, it wouldn't strive. It will move. As soon as Isaac moved away from that place, the water dried up. And the next place he got to, he would dig. Water gushing out. And say, ah, this guy is mysterious. Okay, okay. They fight him again, drive him out. Everywhere he was getting to, he was getting water. And they weren't getting anything. And there were the people who claimed they understand the geography of the land. They thought it was what was in the ground 
that was bringing out the water. They didn't know that what was bringing out the water was on the head of Isaac. Isaac was a child of the covenant. The next in line to Abraham. Am I correct? Ah, ah. A child of the covenant. Even when you stand on the rock, there is something in you that will bring water out of the rock of flint. Read the Bible. Moses brought water for them out of the rock. He spoke to the rock. Water. He hit the rock. Water. If you think it's ordinary, take your rod and go and eat the rock now. When you are living at the realm, everybody can explain you. You are not living in the realm of glory. You are not living. There is something mysterious. A woman came. We call her Mama Ebele. Mommy, you remember Mama Ebele now? She was in charge of a big pharmaceutical company covering the whole of Western Nigeria. This was as far back as 1988. She had this girl, grown-up girl that was very terrible, very nasty, very suicidal, and wanted to kill herself. So the girl came to her meeting, the lady, lady, came to her meeting. She was of marriage age. She wasn't married. She was just, she was into all manner, drugs, sex, all kind. Came to her meeting, and the glory of God hit her. And you see, all you need to do to deal with darkness, switch on the light. Yeah. Don't, don't cry. Don't weep. Your weeping will make no difference. When you switch on the light, darkness knows what to do. <laughs> you won't need to, it must disappear at the speed of light. When the glory hit her belly, her life changed. She became born again, filled the Holy Spirit. Went back home. Mama Epele was watching her for weeks. She wasn't troublesome. She wasn't drinking beer. She wasn't doing all the nasty thing. I said, Epele, come. What happened to you? You're a different person. He said, yes. I went to, I was in a bishop there. I went to Reverend Wale Uke's place. And my life changed. He said, you, Epele, take me there. So the madam came. He, 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 she didn't come to receive Christ. She had a problem. She had been suffering from um, diabetes for over 27 years. Each day she will give us an injection. Diabetes had not been controlled like it is controlled today. There was no metformin and all that. Insulin injection every day. He said many times he would just open her. When he opened her eyes like this, she would be in the theater in UCH. 27 years. I said, Madam, Jesus will heal you today. He said, really? She opened her big, nice uh, uh, handbag and began to bring book out to, to educate me on diabetics. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't know, it. God help me, I didn't know anything about diabetes. How it is this, how it is that. I, I said, okay, I know, I, know. I, I, I heard you. But Jesus will heal you. He said, what will you do? I said, I will lay my hands on you and pray for you. And then she looked at me. She is very educated. He said, what is the connection between your hand on my head and the sugar level in my blood? Our question shocked me. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't have any explanation. I said, Lord, what will I say? I said, the connection is the anointing. I said, okay. Let's not argue. Kneel down. I pray for you. I laid my hands. And God was so gracious. I, I can't claim that everybody I prayed for in my 48 years of ministry got healed. Don't ask me why those who didn't get healed didn't get healed. I'm not God. Who ask him? But that doesn't stop me. I'm not the healer. He said, I will lay my hands on the sick. He will heal them. God healed this woman. Tears were running out of her eyes. Where didn't she report me? Because all the big people were her friends. The, the late Oni of Ife, the late Alafi, 
those were the people she moved with and they were sending a ministry to me not to receive Christ but to receive power <laughs> they didn't want Christ the source of power the source of glory and they want their glory don't make that mistake you are pursuing a mirage if you allow Christ in you and listen to him and follow him he will move you from glory to glory who is moving from glory to glory today? Come on, shout hallelujah. Now, you are called to what? Glory, excellence, beauty, success, health, strength, wealth, perfection, order, decency, If it's excellent, there's order. a structure. Perfection. Nothing lacking. Nothing missing. My God shall supply all your needs. All your needs is not just financial. There are people that are, oh boy. I conducted a wedding many years ago at the University of Lagos Chapel. That's my alma mater. I read an engineering course there for five years. So I was invited to come and go to that wedding. Ah, society wedding, all manner of people there. So I preached the gospel. Some gave their lives to Christ. A woman came. She was dressed up like a typical Legosha. In business. Sorry, I'm not trying to be a business. So she came after this, she met me in the chapel's chaplain's office. When you see her clothes, you know this woman is wealthy. Every finger on her hand had very expensive rings. She painted the forehead, painted the cheek, painted the. <laughs> I mean, just a society appearance. And she, she, as soon as she saw, she began to cry. He said, man of God, I have a flourishing business. I have money. Three cars are coming to me here today. All of them are Mercedes Benz. That's the day of glory of Mercedes Benz. But I'm empty. I'm not fulfilled. I'm a woman. I want to be loved. I want my husband to hold me. I want to conceive. I want to have my children. And she wept. Ah. Man. People are, who have money and they are miserable. Don't believe the word of Solomon that said money answers all things. He said that when he had backslid him from God in his demented state. When, when 1,000 women have stolen his heart away from God. Money can buy you medicine, cannot give you health. Money can buy you a house, cannot give you a home. Money can give you a woman, cannot give you a wife. There's a world of difference, man. Money can give you very expensive clothes and you are using the expensive clothes to cover the fire that is eating you up inside. So people don't know something is eating up. Money is good. I've spoken about it. But money is so limited, my friend. I was so stirred up. I laid my hands on her, prayed for her, pleaded the blood, and I pronounced by the mercy of God, before the end of this year, you'll be happily married. And then I introduced her to Christ. She gave her life to Christ. We hadn't started Christ like church in Lagos. I introduced her to one redeemed church at the headquarters. The woman is married today. Hallelujah. And listen to me. She gave back to children once. The one time she got pregnant, she had a set of twins. 
And wait a minute. Two years after, she entered menopause. Which means if she didn't meet with Christ that day, she would have died barren, broken, battered. But she made the glory. What her money couldn't supply, the glory supplied it. I'm not playing that no money. Remember I told you there's no glory without money. But when we talk of glory, nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing absent. When the glory of God comes on you, it fills all the void. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Your marriage is satisfied. Your job satisfied. Your health. You see, I'm bluffing about my health. Man, I'm bluffing about my wife. People that are beating themselves before they came to church, they won't bluff. I'm telling you, if I want to marry somebody again, I'll pick the same woman. When, 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 we're, when we're coming, she didn't know this. When we're coming this morning, you know, in all our 40 years of marriage, we've, been, we've, we've slept in the same room except when I travel and when she travels. She dressed up before me because I was in the study getting ready. I look at her and say, look at this chick. <laughs> After 40 years. Can, well, can, can you tell how many marriages are broken in four years only? Four years. Or four months even. Hollywood, non wood. They had fame, they had money, but they are empty. Hollywood, they get married three times, four times, five times, and they die in the bathroom, drunk with white drugs. Empty life. But when, oh boy. When glory comes on you, your life is radiant. You are, you are beautiful inside. And you are beautiful outside. People look at you and say, look at glory. Look at her. Oh, somebody say, I receive glory. I receive glory. Am I blessing you? Yes, Let me not go to maybe second to the last phase so I don't bore you. I would will, I will love to do a seminar on this and take it in segment. Now, when you receive Christ, you enter into glory. No, you don't. So don't take any nonsense from the devil. But 2 Corinthians 3.18 that I read to you, look at it. Look at it. 2 Corinthians 3.18, give me KJV son. God bless you. But we all, someone say we all. We all. I told you to say, say we all. We all. That's everyone who has received Christ. With open face, beholding us in the glory of the Lord, I changed into the same image from glory to glory. Somebody say changed. changed. From, glory from glory to glory. glory. God, glory has levels. Hello? Glory has levels. Depending on your responsibility, the glory of a president is different from the glory of a governor. No matter how big the state, the governor, the president of Nigeria is bigger than the governor of Lagos. Correct? Yes. That's what Tinubu did everything to become our local. Okanwa. He did all of that. And it being governor. Governor's answer to him, but are levels of glory based on the responsibility. A governor has responsibility for one state. The president has responsibility for that. So, how many of you want greater glory? Uh -huh. Get ready. If you don't want to move to a higher level of responsibility, don't ask for it. God does not waste his glory. He doesn't waste his glory on irresponsible people who just want to eat fat. They don't want to be a blessing. Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, Lord, bless me. Uh -uh. He blesses you that you may be a blessing. Is somebody hearing me? 
higher glory based on your divine assignment and mandate. Your God-given mandate. God-given assignment. Your God-given vision. Your vision must be larger than where you are now. If you are not having a larger vision than where you are, you are not thinking. You are not seeking God. Where you are now is not the final level God has for you. You are going higher. Somebody say, I'm going higher. Based on your desire. Those who want greater glory, they are hungry. Hungry for God. Hungry for his anointing. Hungry for his power. Hungry. 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 Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. I don't know if you remember that. Lord, show me your glory. Someone who has said, Moses, shut your mouth. What are you talking about? You saw him in the burning bush. He said that was good for that time. You used the glory to confront Pharaoh and you defeated him. That was good for that time. You parted the Red Sea with the glory. That was good for that. You brought water out of the rock. That was good for that time. I want something more. Lord, show me your glory. Anybody that wants to rise to a higher level of glory. You know, some of you, you are counting your money in millions. Can I prophesy on you? Even this year, many of you, you will be paying tithes in millions. God is moving you to a higher financial glory. Begin to rise. Begin to rise. Divine ideas that you multiply your wealth. Receive now. Receive now. Receive now. Amen. You know, one idea can make you a multi billionaire. Receive now. Amen. Receive now. Amen. Receive now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. 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 Amen. Stand there because I want to finish. Do you really want to rise to a higher level of glory? Wave your hand. If you want to shout hallelujah. You must have a strong desire for it. Psalm 41 verse 1. As the heart pants after the brook of water. So pant my soul after you. Oh God. Authentic glory comes from God. You must desire him. Like Moses desired. You must desire him. Like David desired Design like Paul desired that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Hunger for God. Number two, you must prepare to spend quality time in his presence. In quality time. Quality time. Okay, you are standing. Sit down. You are writing. You are making notes. I'll soon finish. All right. Quality. You must you must hunger for him. Complacency is a great enemy of progress. Yeah, after all, I'm not borrowing money. I'm living in my own house. I have a car. Sorry. Is that the limit of what you want from God? The word of the covenant says they shall build houses. Houses. You can live in houses, you can be owner of houses. They shall build houses. You built one house and you think that's the end of the story. Sorry. They shall build houses. You look into your account, you saw some miserable 50 million naira. And you are happy. 50 million. 50 million. Any people that are rich are talking, you must not put your mouth inside. <laughs> don't put your mouth inside. There are some ventures you must not dream about. You are 100 million and you can't want to start a university. 
<laughs> oh boy. Sometimes the bill that comes to my table from my university, 142 million, another one something million. They don't ask in thousands. No matter how small the matter. <laughs> if not for the glory of God, I will have a heart attack. <laughs> Some of the bills come to me. I say, okay, call back. I shut my door. I say, God sent me on this. And you know I cannot do it. Show yourself. And it does. It does. Somebody flew to a pattern to see me. We were building the mill hostel. Brought his own church. Daddy. I've not seen you for a long time. I see it. Are you in Baden? No. Didn't tell me anything. He said, the Lord said I should give you this. And it was the amount we need to f- needed to finish the meal hostel. I prayed. And God called him wherever he was. He said, go see my son. Somebody say Glory. When you are moving in glory, your, the size of your bank account does not determine you. Yes. Does not determine your level. When I look into my account and don't see money, I'm richer than at any time. My source is God. I go to him. Go on my face. You are the king of glory. Wealth is part of glory. Wherever my money is on the face of the earth, I call it forth. Whosoever will sign that check must sign now. Whosoever must come must look for. Huh? When was time for Mordecai to be lifted? The king couldn't sleep. Whosoever sleep, you need to disturb. You are my God. You are the king of all flesh. And he has never failed. He will not fail you. Make him your source. And spend time to eat. What, what do you do in his presence? To worship. To eat his word. Eat it. Eat it. The journey is long. Mm. Challenges will come along your way that it is the word inside you that will reply. When Jesus was in the wilderness and devil was tempting him, that was not the time to read the Bible. That was not the time to memorize the word. It's too late. Each time the enemy came, he said, it is written. It is written. God is not a magician. The knowledge of the word won't jump on you. You must eat. You must sit down and read it and study it and eat it. Eat the word. Eat the Somebody hear the word. Hear this. You will yet prophesy to many nations, many kings, many people. So set to down and eat the word. I don't know for whom that word is. God has a global vision for you. Don't limit the glory of God in your life. Sing. And then, not only do you worship, not only do you eat the word, but you pray. Hey! There is a time for snappy prayer. Name it and claim it. Name it and claim it. I believe it. I lay hands on pretty gay. Oh boy. But if that naming and claiming will work, there will be a time you are alone with God. You are off your work. You are off your phone. Say today, the whole of today, morning to night, Lord, I'm with you. And you pray. You pray in the spirit. Pray. Oh, you don't know the power of praying in the Holy Ghost. But ye, beloved, Build up yourself. Build your capacity. Enlarge your capacity by praying in the Holy Ghost. You go and pray. And you're building up your capacity. And your capacity for glory is rising. For there is a glory of the sun. There is a glory of the moon. There is a glory of the star. And stars differ from stars. We're not equal. In grace, in salvation, we're equal. But in the level of glory, we're different. And what will determine your level is how much of God, how much of God 
you have taken in through his word, through worship, through prayer. A time comes you shut down. You say, why should I remain single? This is only will not go for me. God's word said, it's not good for a man to be alone. I'm going on a one week retreat. One week. Excuse me, in the place of work, my work is important, but not as important as my marriage. I, I, I ask for a casual leave. Seven days, I'm somewhere. Morning, afternoon, evening. Makabu, kalabo, kudeke. You don't even pray in understanding. You pray in the spirit. So the one who knows the mind of God, he solves the problem that you, your mind cannot grasp. Yakapu, kolike, tekora, magabo, godi, gadagabo, mokodi. And you, you come out of that place and your face is radiant. That's what happened to Moses. I need the ministration of death be glorious. How much more glorious shall the ministration of life be? Child of God, if you want to move to a higher glory, prepare to pay the price. Stay in his presence to pray. Don't quit in a hurry. The time you want to pray, in, to spend the day to pray, that's when a friend says he wants to see you. He has been seeing you, your level didn't change. Yeah. Excuse yourself and say, I have an appointment. I tell people, Pastor Isaac, no. I can keep my appointment with men because I keep my appointment with God. The moment I begin to allow men to hinder my appointment with God, I'm finished. Then I will meet them and nothing will happen in their lives. There will be no testimony. Because everything I have, he, gives me, he gave me. Everything I am, he made me. I must stay in his presence. If Jesus will go to pray in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, pray all night. A friend of mine, a European friend, he said, you guys in Africa, you pray all night. What are you talking about? You pray all night. I told him, I said, go and ask Jesus. He prayed all night. He will tell you what we're talking about. They don't understand. Stay in his presence. Make building up yourself in your own soul. Speak mysteries to God. Resolve the issue that your mind has not been able to resolve. That your pastor has not been able to resolve. That your job has not been able to, that your doctor cannot be able, have not been able to Makiboku de keto kobakaya, kura makapoku de keto. Get, get crazy. And then come out of it with your face shining with the glory of God. Have I helped somebody today? I'm going to minister to you, but I've taught you. May this word prosper in your life. May you rise. And rise and rise and rise and shine and shine. May everything that represents shame fall out of your life. May a new wave of glory come upon you. May the hand of God's perfection fall upon you, clothing you with excellence, with health, with soundness, with joy, sorrow to flee away. Shame to flee away, Amen. lack to flee away, Amen. sickness to go away, Amen. affliction to go away, Amen. depression to go away, Amen. intimidation to go away. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. everything that is contrary to glory, go away and never return. And never return. And never return. And never return. You're going to pray for yourself. Repeat after me. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for calling me to be a partaker of your glory. Anything in my life contrary to your glory, I take authority in the name of Jesus. I cast it out. Sickness, go out. Lack, go out. Fear, get out. Depression, get out. Shame, get out. Now you will pray, you will pray with authority. Anything contrary. Don't don't whisper. Command. Command. Loneliness. Get out. I 
I reject shame. I embrace glory. I serve the king of glory. He has called me to glory. Makapo kode keto kori keto kode boda. Ming de poli bos ketudi. Shen de pungla boka tori kede boka. Ming le boko di kete kero bogodi. Bamra makapo kodi keta. Shere bogodi agana. Marie boko de keto koma. Membre boko de keto. Marie beko kodi keto kore. Shandre moko di kata. Ming le bogodi. Araba gara. Araba. Cast shame out. Cast fear out. Cast depression out. Cast sickness out. Cast poverty out. Every work of the devil. Cast them out. And my people shall never be ashamed. And my people shall never be ashamed. And my people shall never be ashamed. Bring your prayers to a close. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. It's not only that God wants you, calls you to glory. God wants you to rise in glory. Day by day, you will rise. Amen. Look at me. I'm not where God wants me to be yet. I'm far from it. Oh. I'm very far from where I used to be. Yes. He, he has lifted me. And I, I can't see the end in sight. Because I trust him day by day. Let me tell you a story of a man. To encourage you. He was the son of a great prophet in one of the Pentecostal denominations in Nigeria. I'm not talking of PFN. Great prophet. He was the only son. The father sent him to the university and he went off. Became a drunkard, a womanizer, smoking cigarette, all kind of evil. The father was broken at that. Kept praying, kept praying, kept praying, kept praying, kept praying. No change. And the father died. And the mountain where he used to have, the father used to have crowd minister to them, became desolate. Covered with bush. The man was in Lagos. And the Lord Jesus Christ met him. And he got saved. God told him there's a call on your life. I'm calling you. Go. Your, your, fa your father who was my prophet is dead. Go meet Bishop Aleuke in the battle. He's your father. And he raise you. So he came. Ah, knelt down and narrated his story. And he brought a, a draft of 10,000 naira. I'm standing on the other road. God. He said, God said, you are my father. And I'm not going to my father empty. I took the money and I prayed for him. I, I want you to be my father. I said, don't worry. Let's keep the relationship going. I wasn't bothered by the money. Just pray for him. Mommy knows what I'm talking about. Ah. When I laid my hands, I didn't know all his story. I said, from today, you will be far from shame. He opened his eyes. He said, Daddy, who told you my story? I said, no, no, we are praying. <laughs> Is that kind of a man. I <laughs> pray for him. Every month, within the first three days of the month, his bank draft will get to me. There had been no money transferred from 10 10,000 
30,000 naira, 100,000 naira. To the point, sometimes one month, it will bring 6 million. It, will, it, will, it didn't diminish and was faithful. It was rising. Rising. He now went to the bush where his father used to be a prophet, cleared the place, and began ministry. Five years, he invited me to come to preach. When I got there, the people I saw couldn't be less than 25,000 in the night. I said, in this jungle? <laughs> he said, Daddy, that is what your word did. You said I'll be far from shame and I'll be in rising. Lift your hands to God from today. By the authority of God, you will be far from shame. You will rise higher, 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 higher from glory to glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Declare, say, Father, I receive your grace today. From today, I'll be far from shame. From today, I'm rising higher, higher, higher from glory to glory. Come and pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Higher. me higher day by day no more shame lift me higher day by day no more shame far from shame shining with your glory lift me higher day by day Begin to bring your prayers to a close. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, before I minister to a few sets of people, connect with the glory today to meet your need. There's no shame in glory. There's no lack in glory. There's no affliction in glory. There's no poverty in glory. There's no failure in glory. There's no depression. There's no frustration. There's no failed marriage in glory. No. No. So what do you want? What garment of shame do you want God to take away and give you a garment of glory? A change. What we are looking at his face like we have been looking at it now. We are changed. Lord, change me in this area of my life. I'm sick and tired of being lonely. Give me your own chosen wife, your own chosen husband. I receive my glory in this area. Lord, cancel every debt. Every debt. Give me your glory in the financial favor. Take away this pain from my body and make me sound whole, complete. Lord, perfect everything that concerns me. Supply all my needs, all. Be it spiritual supply, physical supply, emotional supply, marital supply, financial supply, job supply, business supply, investment. Lord, 
clothe me with your beauty. Let people see your glory in my life. Let all that see me call me blessed. I have answered your call. You have called me to glory and excellence. I embrace my destiny. And from now, I will rise from glory to glory. Day by day. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let him hear your voice, the cry of your heart. Hannah stood before the priest of God. Say, Lord, take away my shame. Give me a male child. And God did. And God did. Jabez cried to the Lord, take away sorrow from my life. Clothe me with your glory. Change my status. Change my level. Isaac had your voice. He stayed where you asked him to stay. And you blessed him there. And he became very great. Lift me, Lord. Be specific. Bring your prayers very close. There is a woman here. You have been praying for your husband who is yet to be born again. Even now, when I say ask for something, it was him you are praying for. The Lord asked me to tell you that a very short while from now, not only will that your husband be born again, not only will he be filled with the Holy Spirit, he will begin to follow you to church. And you will testify to the glory of God. Somebody here, there's a heavy depth that hangs around your neck. And you don't know the way out. The Lord who brought water out of the rock has sent me to you that in three weeks from now, not only will you be out of debt, you will be in surplus. There is a young lady here. Hear this word of the Lord. You have cried to him over who your husband will be. You even mentioned the name of somebody. And the Lord has me to tell you that he will set to you with a man in whose house you will find peace. You will find joy. You will find rest. And it will happen very soon. Very soon. Very soon. If you're sick in your body, I want to make a point of contact with you. Step out here. Step out here. Mommy, please, Jeremy. Step out. You're sick. A sickness is of the devil. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, with power. Going about, heal all that were oppressed of the devil. Oppression of the devil. Get out, get out, get out. Pastor Isaac, join you. Come on here. Because the, the number is quite large. Everybody pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pastor, I stand there. Mommy, stand there. Pastor, stand there. Marama Kabuko, the head. Sickness. Get out. Get out. Be healed. Receive sound health. The name of Jesus. Whatever that affliction is caused, is called. And whatever caused it by the anointing, affliction. Go. 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 Be healed. Healed. In the name of Jesus. Shemo katabo kudia, epika la boka nambo, ojine kure boko dika. Take off your hands, take off, take off, take off, take off your hands. 
from head to toe. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. Shenimbo kura kapo kuda. Mapoka lube kotoria. Haribo kode ketika. By the blood of the Lamb, we cast that affliction out of your body. Be healed. In Jesus' name. Egbai wusa. You wusa. Let's say kese. Let's say kese. Let's say kese. Bobo. I said, The Lord has wiped your tears. Your tears. Wiped. 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 the to make you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The anointed look is destroyed. Be free. In the name of Jesus. Kabula Pura. Ye poko di kata yoga. Bori di mos katoga. Makabuka na poko di yaga. By the power of God, that sickness is consumed. Be free. In Jesus. Free. Be free. Your sins are forgiven. The accusation of the enemy is over. You are free. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. By your sin, you the pussy to Be healed. In the name of Jesus. Go free. Jesus. Lord, let your hand rest upon your daughter. Let her be healed. Total healing. Complete healing. By the blood of Jesus, through the name of Jesus. Go, go. Be here, Jesus.
place. I want to plead with you. I'm not here to ridicule anybody. No, no, no. I'm here to minister to you. I want everybody close to us. Everybody. If you are in debt of any kind, don't close your eyes. Don't open your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. If you are in debt of any kind, any, small or great, and you have been struggling with it, for somebody here, you are surrounded by debt all around. Not just one source. All around. And you are sinking in. The deliverer has come. Amen. While all eyes are closed, just stay there where you are and lift your hand to God in faith. In faith. Ah! In the place of death, let there be light. Amen. The darkness of death, get out. Amen. Get out. Amen. Get out. Amen. Get out. Amen. Jehovah Jireh, arise and supply their needs. I decree your deliverance from depth. I decree abundance upon you. Mysteriously, I drive that depth out and I cancel it. Receive breakthrough. 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 We open the floodgate of financial supply in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will laugh. Amen. The miracle begins now. Amen. Throughout this coming week, you will receive heavy bank alerts. Amen. And you will glorify the name of the Lord. It is settled. Amen. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Amen. All right, put your hands down. Now, if you want Jesus to enter into your heart and you want to become a partaker of the glory of God, you want to be saved, you want to be born again, you want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. You want to be delivered from shame. You want to become a partaker of the glory of God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He will forgive your sins. He will transform your life. He will take sorrow away. He will take affliction away. And you become a new creature. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. So if you want your sins forgiven like that, you want to be free from shame, affliction, ugliness, oppression. And you want to partake of the glory. Whether you're young or old, raise your hand wherever you are. I want to pray for you. God bless you. I, I want shame to be out of my life. I want everything that is not glorious to be out of my life. I want divine perfection. Total deliverance. Freedom. I want to be like Christ. I want to be saved. All of you that are raising your hand, step in front here. Don't put your hand down here. Just come. Come, come here. Come here. Let me pray for you. Just come. Just come here. I want, I want to be a partaker of the glory. Come, come, come. 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 I want my life to change. I want Jesus to transform my life. I want my life to become glorious. I want my life to become beautiful. I want to radiate the glory of God. Come, come, come. I'm still waiting for you. They're still coming. They're still coming. Clap for them. Clap for them. I'm still waiting for somebody. I'm still waiting for somebody here. An end has come to shame in my life. If you're coming, come, come, come. I'm waiting. I'm waiting here. I'm waiting here. I'm waiting here. Jesus is waiting for you here. Come, come, come. Men and women, come. Men and women, come. Come here. Yes. 
Anybody else see? Come, 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 come. Come on, on here. Come on, on here. Come on, on here. Come on, on here. This is your day. This is your day of glory. This is your day of change. God is removing every garment. Every garment of shame. God is taking them out of your life. God is making you a new creature. Oh. Is there somebody I'm still waiting for? All of you that are in front here. Put your hands on your chest like this. Put your hands on your chest. And pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I need you in my life. Come into my heart. Forgive all my sins. Give me eternal life. Today, I give my life to you. I open my heart to receive you into my heart. Take away my shame. Give me your glory. From today, I am yours. Amen. Mommy, help me lay hands on them. Don't cry, baby. He died for you. He loved you. You can. You can. You will do it. You will make everything you beautiful. You have a track for it of keeping your word. You are not about to stop doing it now. Oh, Lord, I'm oh, by you. garment of shame from your life. The Lord clothes you with his glory. Your life is transformed. It is well with you. Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen. Where is the head cancel? Are you? Where is the, where is the head? Where is the head? All of you, look at this gentleman. Follow him. Follow him. Clap for them. Shortly after I prayed for the people, as soon as I prayed now, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Please close your eyes. There are seven of you here. It's something God asked you to do. That's what the Holy Spirit said. Something God asked you to do. To get the major breakthrough and lift that you have been trusting him for. I will pray for you. Two things. I'm going to ask. I'm not going to ask you to come out. I'll pray for you where you are. I will wait back shortly after this meeting. I'd like you to see me and talk to me. I feel a staring of the compassion and the anointing of God within me to deal with your case. I don't know what you are. I don't know that thing you want. And I don't know what God has told you to do. For your seven, it's a special grace. All eyes closed. If you are one of the seven, just raise your hand. Yes, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Father, look at this, your children. Whatever it is that you have told them to do, I impart them with grace to do it with ease. It will not be difficult for you. And the door is open for your miracle, Amen. for your breakthrough, Amen. for your success. Amen. It is settled. Amen. 
Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody lift your two hands to God. I bless you irrevocably. Amen. Irreversibly. Amen. You have poured your heart to God. He will answer you by fire. Amen. Faster than you imagine, he will answer you. Amen. Receive abundant grace. Amen. Favor. Amen. Lift. Amen. Honor. Amen. Peace be unto you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Lift your hand and bless the Lord to worship him. Just give him thanks. Just give him thanks. Now you see... I will send your pastor to you. Um, it won't be long before I come back. I've been extremely busy. The PFN job has not made the matter lighter. But thank God for his grace. So, just give thanks to God. I'll send your pastor to you. I won't, it, it won't be long. I'll come back again. Wave your hand. Lord, give him thanks. Lord, thank you. You are taking me higher and higher from glory to glory. Just give him glory, give him praises.